My name's Chris DeSells. I'm a uh, platform architect uh, with Pivotal out of the Northeast region, and this is a talk about a custom app autoscaler. Of course, we have to talk about a few disclaimers before we get started. Probably the most important one here is that the concept demonstrated is not an indicator of future functionality. So this is just a, a demo that I put together. Um, we were sitting in the lobby of a, of a prospect and uh, Dan Merles asked, you know, could we scale applications based on market data um, for the client that we were going to see? I said, yeah, we could certainly do that. I mean, how many people have used the Cloud Controller API to do some sort of, um, you know, lookup of maybe organization spaces, actually done anything that the Apps Manager does um, by just creating uh, an application using the Cloud Controller API, either the REST uh, client or, um, you know, the Java client? So I said, sure, let me uh, build something and, and see what we can show. Um, a couple other uh, statements here. So, you know, I wanted to come up with an acronym for what I was doing, and I thought of CAS, but I'm like, Conta container as a service, that's not good. So that's why I took out one of the A's, um, just to make sure we're clear that it's not container as a service. Um, so really what the, the use case is, is to define custom scaling rules for an application based on results from our REST API endpoint. If we think about... Um, you know, APIs that, that are out there and available, whether it's third-party APIs or even APIs that we're writing. We're typically writing uh, REST endpoints that produce some kind of JSON. So I said, why don't I define the ability for the scaling for any REST endpoint? So to build the UI that allows someone to define a, a scaling rule based on that endpoint, and then they can pick the elements that that JSON returns to define what the rule is going to be. And then actually have something that, a worker that runs every 30 seconds just like the auto scaling does, to actually validate the rule, actually make the call to that REST endpoint, and determine whether or not it needs to scale the, the application either up or down, depending on what the rules are defined as. Um, so I also wanted to build a UI in order to provide this capability so the, the, the application developers could actually define the rules as part of this, and then to make it something that's available as a service in the marketplace. So then taking it one step further, right? This is topics about auto scaling. But it's really a lot of different things, too. It's about service broker. It's about creating a tile so I can install it as a tile. Um, it's about using a metrics forwarder for PCF um, that became available so I can define custom metrics and, again, provide a REST endpoint and be able to do scaling based on that. So what I did for, for an example was we could use any REST endpoint, but I wanted to be able to throttle um, you know, what those data values are. So I just wrote two simple apps. The first app is just a, a Spring Boot app that provides a REST endpoint that returns some market data. Daily change, monthly change, hourly change, just a REST call, and it provides a JSON string with those values. So I wrote a, a graph on top of that so I could just change the value so we can see how the scaling works either up or down based on the rules. So this is a, a sample of the output. Right? This is just a, an app that I have running on, on PDubs that returns a, a JSON string, and then I have some UI that I can actually change what the values are um, for, that, for that return. So this is independent of the autoscaler. It's just an app that I have on the side uh, to provide that REST endpoint that I can use as part of my scaling rule. The second example, which was just a newly added addition uh, to this demo, because what happened is that part of the um, metrics forwarder for PCF is you have the ability, you know, ability to um, send data to the firehose and be able to read that out, whether it's custom metrics or maybe it's actuator metrics as part of the Spring Boot app. So what I wanted to do is um, the PM actually wrote a, an application. It's called Custom Metric Net Firehouse, which I initially had in here, well, Firehose Reader, um, which is a Spring Boot app to collect and aggregate custom metrics via a REST endpoint. So this application I can define with an uh, app GUID and then what the metric is that it will listen to for a particular application. So I have several applications that I have bound to the metrics uh, forwarder, and then this application will, based on an app GUID and what the metric is, uh, listen for those applications and what that metric is and provides REST endpoints that I can then use in the scaling rule. So that was something that we added um, just recently. So an example, um, so this is, yeah, this is the second part. So that's one app, that's the, the ability to read and, and uh, send those metrics. But then there's the actual application that's emitting the metrics. So I have an application that does two different things. It's using the actuator, so it's emitting actuator metrics, memory, things like that. And then there's a custom uh, metric that I'm you know, setting as part of that application. 
um, just using a standard uh, Dropbox uh, metrics API for that application to emit custom metrics. So if we think about this, we could you know, extend this to anything that we need to. It's just a way to define what the metrics are and they produce some kind of REST endpoint that produces the JSON string that I can then use as part of the rule definition and then define what that rule is and how I should scale either up or down based on that. So there are a lot of different applications. These are really separate from the auto scaling, but this is a way for me to show how I can you know, use the metrics for order for PCF and then also have an endpoint that I can you know, throttle the different um, values that it returns so we can see how the scaling actually works up and down. And this is an example of the response from that custom um, you know, fire hose reader. So it provides uh, different endpoints, and this is just a collection of memory. And so as part of the metrics for memory, there's uh, a bunch of different aggregations, uh, last, mean, medium. So I could actually define the rule based on memory and what the last value was. So there's different aggregation points um, that I can define now as part of the rule too. Don't worry, it's not all slides. We'll get to the, the good stuff in a, in a few seconds here. But there's a lot of different components that, that are, are gonna be showcased here. So from an architecture standpoint, in terms of how this works, is that the, the main worker class is um, a Spring Boot application and it's using a Cloud Control or REST API. So what the, what the job of this uh, particular application is to run every 30 seconds and for a given space, determine if there are any rules, if there are any rules, call what the rule has defined for a REST endpoint and compare that to what the, the user defined as it needs to match, whether it's greater than, less than, equal than, equal to. And then based on that, either scale the application up or down. So that's all the worker's doing. It's responsible for a given space is to actually scale based on calling that REST endpoint, which produces data, and comparing it to what the rule definition is. And then it'll actually scale either up or down. And so to take that one step Further is to actually, uh, because I wanted to provide this in the marketplace, was to write a, uh, uh, a broker application. So using, uh, building an application using Spring Boot and then using uh, the project from Spring Cloud, Cloud Foundry Service Broker, um, provides an abstraction to build service brokers um, so I can create a service instance and, and the buying capabilities. And what this is actually gonna do is part of the, um, using the Cloud Controller API, so I said, well, let me use something different. Instead of REST, let's use the Java client. So the responsibility of this service broker is to deploy the worker application each time you create a service instance. So when I'm in a particular space and I do create service instance, it's actually gonna push the worker application into a given space that I've defined as part of the tile that'll be available for that, that service instance in a given space. So its responsibility handles a particular service instance. And then to actually make this more um, useful is to, to wrap this up so it's provided as a tile. And that's just using the tile generator, and I'll show you how I, uh, how I did that, but the type is an app broker. So then I can, as an operator, install it as a tile. And then it's available in the marketplace um, for people to do custom auto-scaling. So that's just the, the, the basic architecture around how the auto-scaling works. It's a couple different components, but the main component is the worker application that's responsible for calling the REST endpoint for that rule definition and then comparing the data value to what was defined as part of that rule. And so well, I like to have things that are visual. So I said, well, let me create an application, again, using the cloud controller, that it's just gonna be a single view based on my credentials that will list all the applications that I have access to. So a single view, so all the applications, which org, which space, and I have some other data elements that I'm just displaying just to show how you can use the, the API. And then I have a button, which you'll see in a few minutes, that allows you to bring up the rule builder so you can define what that custom endpoint is. So now we can get to the good stuff. So let me first show you a couple different things that I have here. So this is the application that returns the, uh, the market data. This is not real market data, right? This is my application where I've populating some values, and it's just a REST call. And we'll see some different data points that I have here that I can use as part of my scaling rule. And then I just wrote a, um, the same application. I just wrote a, a chart, because I like something visual that I can see where I can then actually change 
the daily value, just so I can toggle it so we can see the application, meaning that my code actually works, that it's scaling based on the rule or scaling down based on the rule, a visual component to that. So that's one application on the side that's running uh, on PDubs. And then there's the custom fire hose uh, reader. And let me just show you this. This is, this is, a, this is really cool. If you used uh, Swagger for um, you know, your REST endpoints, you get a nice little page that you can then um, you know, see what the definition is for those endpoints and actually try them out right through this UI. So this has a couple different um, you know, controllers that are part of it, but what's most important is the first thing you need to do is tell it you know, which application that it should be reading metrics from. So you're just gonna specify uh, the application GUID, and then you're gonna tell it which metric you wanna listen to. We don't wanna listen to everything, right? Because that's gonna be very time consuming. So we're just saying, hey, let's listen to memory. Here's the app GUID and here's the data point. So again, separate application that is providing a REST endpoint that I can then use in the scaling rule that provides you know, some data that I can scale on. And the data in this example is, which I'll show you what this application, and this is that separate application, it's just a spring application. It's not the custom firehose application, it's an application uh, that's separate but is bound to the uh, metrics forwarder for PCF. And so this application, based on this app GUID, is emitting these metrics, right? So these are standard actuator metrics, right? Some of these things here, heap, memory, um, the timer response is a custom metric. So I defined a custom metric in addition to the actuator metrics. So if we think about that, I could define anything that I wanted to for a custom metric and have that sent to the fire hose and then this app will read it and then I can call that endpoint to use as part of my rule. So these are just standard actuator uh, metrics and then there is, these are a list of the different ones that I can use. So I can then take from this list, tell the custom fire hose reader which metric I wanna listen to. And so I've already defined that and then if I make the call right here, let me just try it out. So for the memory, this is the JSON that is returned, right? So it's showing me the last, the average, and the max. So I could just copy this URL to define in my rule where I wanna build my scaling based on. So in my example, I'll say scale based on memory, or well, which element of the memory, which aggregation do I wanna use? So two different variations, but the concept is the same. A REST endpoint that provides some kind of data that I can define as part of the scaling rule. So let's go to another application. Let's go here. So I'm just running this locally on my machine uh, just as a, another mechanism for running an application, not somewhere in the cloud. And what this is gonna do is provide me the UI using the Cloud Controller API to list all the applications based on the permissions that I have and to define those rules. So let me just run this app. Let me just log out, log back in again. And so what I did is I you know, requested for, uh, based on that username and password and what the system domain was. So I can use this, um, you know, whether it's gonna be for uh, my PCF uh, foundation that's running on GCP or I could point to PDubs and I'll run that uh, later. So what it's doing is just listing out. And again, the example is, using the cloud controller. So listing out all the applications, and I'm just printing out uh, you know, the org they belong to, the space they belong to, number of instances, the build pack they're using, the last push date, and then restart, and then the button on the right is where I can define what the custom rule is. So I can just scroll down here and define what the rule is. But before I do that, let's actually look at a couple other pieces to this. First, let me show you the, the tile. So here you'll see that I have a, a tile called the custom app autoscaler. This I used the tile generator for, and it's a of type app broker, which is actually taking my service broker app that I wrote using the Spring Cloud Cloud Foundry service broker project that includes the jar file for the worker. So every time I create a service instance, it will deploy that application into a specific uh, organization slash space. So there's the tile that I have. And then if I go to my apps manager, you'll see here under this org, this is where I'm deploying it to, and then this space, 
uh, app autoscaler space that there's two different applications of the worker running. This is, these are created when I do um, you know, create service instance. It actually is deploying the worker app using the name autoscaler and then the, the GUID of that service instance. So every time I create a service instance, it automatically pushes that application um, to this space to do the worker for, that, for the rules in that area. So let's go back to the point here, and let's, let's take a look at this one here. So in this org, in this space, the, the PCF demo, I have this app here. It only has one instance right now. So the UI that I wrote is, you know, define what the endpoint is. So let's just go and copy that endpoint. Control C, come back here. Since I added uh, LastPass to the browser, you don't get to see my nice checkbox. So I didn't want you guys stealing my password when I logged in, because I know this is being recorded. So what happened is it, it validated, there's a checkbox there. If I need to pass a key, it'll pass a key. But what it did is it populated um, you know, the rule with all the elements of that JSON string. So, so no matter which um, URL I put in here, it's gonna read the JSON string and then populate the elements that I can use for the rule. It's just providing a cleaner way so someone doesn't have to type something in. So we'll just, we'll be really specific with this rule. And we'll say, Minimum instances, two, and then four. So we'll hit create, and then let's go here. And so here's what's happening. So we just did that rule. And you'll see immediately what happened was we were at one instance and it said, hey look, there's a rule defined here now, but the minimum number of instances are two. So it's gonna scale the application up to two instances. The rule hasn't been met because, right, we wanna compare the value of 0 0.09 to the um, you know, day change, which is only at uh, 0 0.05. So it's just running every 30 seconds and it's checking whether or not it needs to scale the application. And the next iteration is right to say, no, we don't need to scale because the rule hasn't been met. So if I go back to the UI, of this little app that I have here, right? Here's the data element that it's getting as part of the rule when it's checking every 30 seconds. Let's go back and what did I say that was gonna be? I should have did a, a, a greater than, but um, a 0.9, okay. That's pretty easy, so we'll just do 0 0.09, change that, go back here. We'll see that now the day changes 0 0.09, and then we come back in here, and next time that the rule's gonna run, right, whoops, 0.8, I, I should've worn my glasses. Change that back to eight, and this is why I have the UI so I can just kinda toggle this stuff back and forth. And so the next time it cycles through, it's gonna know that it needs, based on the rule definition, to actually scale the application up or down. And so that's what the purpose of, of the, the endpoint is, is to be able to see that, and here we'll see that it's doing the post, so now it's scaling it up to three instances. And it's just based on the rule definition. The key is that every 30 seconds, it's gonna call that REST endpoint that's defined for that rule, and compare it to the values that are defined um, in the UI that were defined, right? In this case, I said equals, day change equals 0 0.08. And then if I toggle this back down, we'll see that it's actually gonna throttle the stuff back down. Changes to 0.4, we hit change, come back here, we'll see the elements back down to four. If we go back to the um, scaling, you see that it already went back up to four, and then the next iteration will start scaling it down, one instance at a time, because the rule hasn't, uh, isn't met anymore. So the responsibility is to actually scale that back down. So that's the, that's the purpose of um, you know, the, the REST endpoint, um, being able to use that. The other, the other thing that I wanted to do was, um, if we take a look at, so here, here we'll see that it's scaling down, right? So because the rule hasn't been met anymore, scale equals false, let's scale it back down to what the minimum is. So a very simplistic example of how the cloud controllers use, um, you know, making different calls to actually set what the data elements are for a particular application. In this case, we're scaling uh, instances either up or down based on a definition of what a rule is. The rule is generic enough because it's just a rest call. A rest call is returning some data elements. What's the data element? 
what are we comparing it to? And then running every 30 seconds. And then let's, let's do one other thing. Let me just, let me log out here. Let me go. Let me log into uh, P Dubs. Whoops. I forgot my password, but I do know now. And while this is running, let me just show you uh, a couple different things here. So I said that I have a, a, a tile, right? We saw the tile in the Ops Manager. So if you've ever taken a look at the tile generator, right? It supports different types. Um, let me just come to the top here. You know, what you're gonna do is um, install the tile generator, and then you can use um, different types for what you're trying to do from a service um, that you're providing. So in my case, right, I have a service broker. So all I had to do was, um, these are the different types that you can define as part of the, the tile uh, definition. So here's a, a standard application. You can define some of the, the values for how it gets pushed. Um, and if we scroll down a little bit more, we'll see here's a service broker. The only thing that I needed to do was the name, the type, any uh, information that I needed to when I pushed the application, and then if I needed credentials, and if it was gonna enable global access. So the only thing that I had to do, let's bring this up, Probably can't see it that good there. Let's see. Well, what's important here is that there's very little data that I had to define. I defined where it's gonna be deployed, which org, which space, the size of that org and space, and then the, the name of it, the type, app broker, the path to the service broker jar, right? The service broker is that app that I showed you earlier, Spring Boot app that has the jar file of the worker. And that's all I defined, and it generated a tile for me. And I imported that into my ops manager, and when I did that, it deployed my, let me go back here. Let's see, org. And if you, if you notice the, the tile when we're in ops manager, it was at version uh, 0.0.13. So this is the service broker application it deployed for me, which is using, it's a Spring Boot app that's using uh, the project Spring Cloud Cloud Foundry Service Broker. So that's the uh, service broker application. And what happens every time I create a service instance, it deploys the worker into the app autoscaler space. So those are the two major components. So I can go into the um, particular space to create service instance, it'll deploy that as an application. And then, and, and so this is just the, uh, uh, the GitHub repo for that. So let me go back here. So not now. So here I actually pointed to pdubs, right? I just changed the username, credentials, and then the system domain. So here I'm pointing to pdubs, and the, the list is a little bit longer, right? There's a lot more apps up there that are in the Oregon space that I have access to. Um, but what I, what I liked about doing uh, this particular example was to have a single view of all the different apps, right? Instead of drilling down into a specific org and then a specific space. I could see in one single pane the different apps that I had. And obviously I could change the different types of data points that I have that are displayed as part of this grid. But it's just a simple way to exercise how the, you know, the Cloud Controller API is used. And then using a bunch of different uh, technologies and tools to make that custom app autoscaler something that I could use as part of uh, an example through service broker, through a tile, and then have it more um, you know, driven based on just someone defining what a rule is, as opposed to wiring all that stuff together. And that's, that's just the example that I have from a, a custom app autoscaler. Yeah. Any, any questions? Is all this code available on GitHub? Sure. I, I gotta clean up a little bit. Yeah, it def definitely is. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. By the end of the week, yeah, yeah. I, I cleaned it up a lot, right? And there's, there's a lot of different things. I just gotta remove all my, like today during the, the, the keynote, right? I think someone had a slide and, and they were doing if array element zero equals array element, 
I don't have code like that. It's better, better than that, but yeah. <laughs> that was pretty hard coded, right? No, no uh, data checking on that. But yeah, there's a bunch of different components that make up this, but you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's a really simplistic example of cloud controller API, service broker, and then being able to generate a tile. Yeah, yeah, I have I have all the the applications um, under a single project uh, on GitHub. So the the service broker, the worker, and then the UI component, and then the sample app that's just the New York uh, Stock Exchange data. Yep. And then and then if you had questions, let me just uh, go to my last slide. You could just shoot me an email. I mean, I'm on Twitter, but I'm not on it. I have, a, I have an account, but I'm not on it. It's better to email me. Yeah, yeah, so, so it's looking at the application. I guess we, uh, as part of the actuator, it would define which instance, though, right, that it's, that it's using. Right, meaning it's always getting based off that one instance. Yeah, right, right, yeah, yeah. And, th and that, that was the quickest way to show, um, you know, something that was bound to, actually, let me just, I can show you that really quick. That's the, this is the other app. Right, if I go into my apps manager, this is the org development. This is the app right here. This is the app that is emitting the actuator and the custom metrics, and it's just bound to the um, metrics forwarder as another example, right? Yeah, I, I can't comment specifically on that, but if you, if you see things that are coming out, um, like the, the metrics forwarder, right, that's providing a way now for you as an as a app developer to push uh, metrics into the fire hose and then be able to read out. So you know, maybe there's things that are coming down the road. I can't comment specifically on stuff like that, but you see things in the product that are available that help make stuff like that easier. So you could envision something, right, maybe down the road. But I, I, yeah, I don't have insight into that. But things like this make it a lot easier, right? All right, thank you.